Shemaya versus Diaz. Where are you guys at? Where are you at mentally? Because this has changed and you've changed. I've changed. We all have. I just want to know where you are right now. This entire piece of business is based around two words, and that is, what if? What if? Nate wins. What happens then? I mean, I heard Errol Awani do a whole piece on this, that Dana walks into the locker room right there when Nate's still sweaty and hands him a check for $20 million and says, come back and fight for our championship. That's not a bad guess by Ariel. What if Chemayev wins? Oh, so what? He was supposed to win? I, I don't think that's right. This is a pay-per-view. This is a main event. This is a sold-out arena. This is going to be seen around the world. This has been stated to be a number one contenders match. I get that that statement was made prior to where the division at. I'm just sharing with you guys. It also was an eight-to-one spread favoring Chemayev that in less than 24 hours, I was sitting in this chair when the fight came out. First thing I did is go to DraftKings. It was 8-1. to one. Made a piece on it. Came and talked to you guys. I came back here 24 hours later. I brought up DraftKings again just to confirm that I'm right. It was 12-1. to one. It had moved 50%. I, just, I don't think there's a time that that's ever happened. Dana White went from promoting and building a fight where he took a star and put him against a star. It's a recipe that works every time, right? I mean, if you're in Dana White's position, you work your entire ass to have a star. If you do a really great job, you got two of them at the same time. Oh, by the way, if they're in the same weight class, your job is now done. You've, you've now already done it. You spent all this money and all this time and all these years working, but this one you can sail in. This one is where the fruits of your labor, you just sign them up and off you go. It was not the case. Dana had to come out and justify it. He had to justify why he was doing it. And there's another thing that never happened. One thing that never happened in this fight, I wanted it to. I wanted it for the drama and so did you guys, which was promoter versus athlete. Stone Cold versus Vince McMahon. And Dana wouldn't do it. Dana wouldn't do it, didn't do it, isn't about to do it. Wouldn't raise his tone. Would not be upset at all. Never talked about, hey, if you're ever thinking of leaving the UFC, you know, it's probably a good idea and I never get in your way. If you ever think about retiring, you know, it's probably a good idea that you retire. He didn't play any games. He didn't do anything whatsoever. He told the story the way that it happened. Look, we always have a hard time getting, getting Nate. We wanted to fight Shemaya for a while. We're starting to look at other options. Didn't like that was going to come through. We got this one done. Here you are. Dana hasn't gone any further than that. And I'm trying to emulate tone. He never changed his tone. How come? What do you guys suppose that is? Because Nate played ball. Nate was the other side of it. He, he was ready. He was ready to start throwing him right down the middle. He just never got met. Now, is there anything to that? Quite possibly not. But maybe. Imagine a different scenario. Okay, Errol Hawani laid out a scenario. If Nate Diaz beats Chemayev, which more likely than not, if Nate is to win, he stops Chemaya. That's going to be just, I mean, could you even believe that moment? That would be such a bigger moment than if Bruce Buffer gets in there and he reads the scorecards. And Douglas Crosby sees it. And Saul D'Amato and Trisha, Trisha Jarman have it. Like, could you imagine? That's going to that's be a huge moment. But how much exponentially bigger if Nate was to stop him? So Ariel laid out a scenario that Dana walks to the back. Ariel even had the number, 20 million. $20 million for you to come over to England and do a rematch with Leon. Okay. Let me just give you a different scenario. Nate Diaz leaves the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Right? Yeah, ding, ding, ding. Right? I get it. That's been headlines for a long time. Nate Diaz leaves the Ultimate Fighting Championship, but he leaves there with a massive grudge with Dana. There's no bigger star in our sport. Make no mistake. There is nobody that draws or sells or gets headlines more. Make no mistake. It's Dana. And imagine. I would argue for you at this point in time, one of the hottest reasons that the topic of Paul versus Anderson has sustained and captivated people is because Dana made a comment about it. I believe that to be true. I don't think that you guys would disagree with me. So imagine that Nate were to leave. He's going to go into a promoter's business. Oh, and by the way, he's got heat. I'm just suggesting for you, there could be a very calculated reason why the boss is staying calm. Don't make, don't make for a second 
that when we all found out in Brett Okamoto's tweet three days ago that was shared with me by Jesse on fire that I came and made you guys a piece about that Nate Diaz was looking for a promoter's license, don't make believe for a second that's the first time that Dana heard that. I assure you, he was aware. I, I don't know that that has anything to do with it. I'm just sharing a different scenario for you. Look, let me take you back to the W uh, WE and the Attitude Era with WCW. Eric Bischoff wanted heat with Vince McMahon so damn bad. He was challenging Vince to fight. He finally announced that he had Vince. Truly. Imagine this happened to you guys. You guys are consumers. Imagine somebody says... Mike Tyson's fighting tomorrow night. You buy tickets, you come down. Nobody ever told Mike. And Mike is not coming. And when you get there, Mike is not going to be there. And now you're all mad at Mike. Imagine how bad he would look. And he would be furious and he would sue you. Correct? Yeah, sure he would. Bischoff did it. Bischoff did exactly what I just told you. Booked arena, booked a date, made a poster, sold the tickets. He was going to take on Vince McMahon. Vince had nothing to do with this. The arena fills up. The TV people are watching. Bischoff works out there. Vince doesn't come. Bischoff accepts the win by forfeit. Vince was too chicken to watch. He knew he was going to be sued. He knew he was going to be sued. He wanted it. He literally was looking for attention to the degree he was looking forward to the court case. His marketing team could justify with the CFO the expense that that's going to go through if you juxtapose that with the attention it's going to bring in. It's a wild story, but it's true. It's true. And this entire fight of Diaz versus Shemayev is going to come down. And the, as the fight gets closer, if you guys aren't here yet, if you're not to the, the, the what-if stage of this yet, mark my words, you're going to think Chael's Kreskin. It is going to happen to you. It is most commonly going to happen in that 72-hour, maybe even 48-hour period. But it is going to happen. What if Nate wins? Some of you are planning to not watch this. Some of you love Nate Diaz so much, that's why you're not watching it. You've seen the odds. You think this is a lamb going to slaughter. Part of you, you will. You'll end up getting it. Because somewhere along the way, you're going to, what if? What if my guy wins? What if DraftKings, who's been wrong before, is wrong this time? And it's very interesting. Nate Diaz did an interview with Brett Okamoto. And Nate Diaz said, I'm the best fighter UFC's ever had. And he sat there with a straight face and he was waiting for Brett to argue with him. But Brett didn't because Nate followed it up. He said why he thinks that. He said, go through the roster and the rankings and you go find anybody that had as hard a fight as I'm fighting nothing but world champions. And I mean nothing, not to mention I'm doing it at two different weights. I'm doing it at 55. I'm doing it at 70. And it's nothing but gold medalists that I'm taking on. Nobody can make that claim. It's a strong argument. I like that argument myself. I think that it does matter. I think if a guy's 30 and 0 and another guy's 13 and 5, but I think you can look a little bit closer. I think it involves deeper research. The sport of boxing doesn't agree. It's got to be an O and somebody's O must go and you must have these beautiful records. If you lost more than two times, you're a complete bum, but that's not the way they do it in MMA. And I thought that Nate made a compelling argument. I think the make, Nate makes a very fine point. And it's the only time that Nate's ever fought where he's had nothing to lose. There's always been something. And I'm not talking about a little bit of prestige. I'm not talking about a little bit of money. I, I get that. But there's always been a title. There's always been a contendership. There's always been something on it. Massive. I don't believe there's one bit of pressure on Nate because of 12 to 1 dog. I think it's the opposite. I think that's an interesting spot. It would change me. I mean, all I can do is follow the gold rule, guys. Gold rule in life. Put yourself in somebody else's shoes. How would you act? If I had absolutely nothing to lose, it would be different. I can remember just to personalize it a little bit, but one of the best performances that I've ever had. It was a performance that nobody saw it and it was in the practice room, but it was two weeks after I retired from the sport. Went in to see the boys, put my gear on, did a little workout. I'm loose. There's always been some things I wanted to try, but I never did because I wouldn't use them on Saturday. I start trying some of these things. They start working. I start flowing. I start to have a different uh, energy. I start to have a different look at it. I don't have to grind this out. I don't have to stay in there. I don't have to push. I don't have to catch the guy in front of me. All these different things that you do, but they create a fatigue. They create an exhaust. All of a sudden, my without training and nothing to transform, my energy was better. 
I don't know what components of that is going to be true for Nate and me walking away and being done with the sport versus what he's up against, but I will share one commonality, which is the nothing to lose. I go a little bit further, and I think Nate has ways to win this fight aside from having his hand raised. I think if Nate wins a round, just by example, I think if Nate starts to win scenarios, I think if Nate is the one winning on their feet, forces Jemayev to go for a takedown, any variation of that becomes small victories. You get a few small victories in a fight, you turn it into rounds. You get a few more, you turn it into a couple of rounds. You get a few more small victories, you win the contest. I mean, this is the way that this game is played at the highest of levels, but most guys can't do it because they're distracted. They have something else on their mind. They're all puckered up with this fear of where does my career go? Where will I be? Will they resign me? Do they like me? He just doesn't have any of those things. Nate is a human being, as special as he is. These things that apply and these things emotionally that affect other human beings affect him too. But in this case, they're very positive. It's an interesting fight, guys. If you're not there yet, you got about three days. But trust me when I tell you, you'll get there. You're going to get to the category, just like I'm at right now, of what if.